Okay. Hello, chat. How's it going? Hopefully well. We're back. We're playing Elden Ring. And I don't know if the dog is actually going to take a nap or not. She's weirding me out. So I don't know what's going on with that. But we'll see. We'll, we'll play it as we get there. Uh, anyway, we're back. We are playing Elden Ring. And I'll have you know, Pling Pling Plong is not from the Dark Souls 3 OST, Mickle. It's from the Dark Souls 1 OST. All right, they've been reusing this shit longer than you think. That little Pling Pling. They don't have the Plong in the Elden Ring theme, but the Pling Pling is the same. It's the same Pling Pling. It's just missing the plung. Anyway, I think I'm ready. Uh, Outlast or amnesia, you ask me? <sighs> Probably amnesia. Uh, neither, if that was an option, but... Oh, I'm in a cave. Suffering ahead. Okay, I was like, I don't know where the hell I'm going. Like, I don't know, I just, I kinda, you know. We kinda run around. Dark Souls 3 made it iconic. I think Dark Souls 1 sold more copies. <gasps> We're fine. All that for a goddamn smithing stone. Oh, a somber. Wait, a three? Oh. Um. It looks sketchy. Do I go back? Or do I do I send it? Well, that guy just went for it. That guy thought he was going to jump all the way down to the boss room. What was he doing? Yeah. Okay, we're fine. It was not as scary as it looked. Yeah, I don't know what the dog's doing. Um, now I'm I'm actually curious. Hold on. Um, Dark Souls games sales figures. Um. Oh, thank you for appraising the message. Uh, okay. The Dark Souls series has shipped 35 million. That's very helpful. Um, it's not what I'm looking for. Uh, oh, here we go. Here we go, here we go, here we go. You know what? Dark Souls 3 did sell the most of the trilogy. I was wrong. But it's not by a lot. Dark Souls 1 sold 16 million. Dark Souls 3 sold 20 million. Which I mean, you know, 4 million is a lot. But I mean, like, the gap is not super drastic. Actually, all of them are pretty close in sales. Um, Dark Souls 2 sold 13 million. So none of them are like an outlier by a ton. They're, like they're all, you know, a, a few million separated, but they, uh, there's no like crazy, like, oh, this game sold like shit or this game sold a ton compared to the others. Like, they're all, they're all pretty much there with one another. I'm kind of surprised. I, I definitely would have thought that Dark Souls 1 sold more copies. Just because back when it came out, it was like a way bigger deal. If the jump looks too far, you can make it. Bro, I don't know about that rule. That is maybe a crazy rule to try to plant into my head. I don't know about that one. I don't know about that one. 
And if it looks like Torrent should make that jump with ease, you will eat your wor Oh, yeah, 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 that, that part's true. <laughs> that part is definitely true. If it looks like Torrent will, will clear the gap, he won't. Uh, that is a general rule that I have also found myself. Bitch. There's a ledge, you can go down it. I don't know about that one. You should have seen the ledge. But hello, Ryan. Um, Thank God we don't have like a hand cam. You guys would be actually disgusted. Do you guys want to know? Uh, I don't even know if I should. I was like, do you guys want to know how I look around and run while I, uh, while I play Souls games? But you probably don't. Because I'm a known claw gamer, but something about the Souls games forces me to keep my thumb. All right, you're gonna have to, you're gonna have to live with this information, okay? You ready? I'm gonna try to do it. See, it's hard. I'm just gonna have to turn with it. I'm just gonna have to scoot around. Okay, controller, right? You can see it. Normal human being, like this. This is how they play games, right? Me, this is how I play games. I, I do this action, right? Actually, more accurately, it's kind of like this action sometimes. Like these buttons, thumb. These buttons, pointer. If I'm using the thumbstick, all four are pointer, right? Do you know what happens in Souls games for some reason? Because my thumb has to be my dodge button in these games. This. This happens, chat. When I'm running around, this. Now you know. You didn't want to know. You shouldn't know. But now you know. Blasphemy, what the fuck? <laughs> you you thought it was just gonna be a claw grip. You you were like, oh yeah, we've seen this before. We knew that no. No. Plays with the claw grip. I've talked about it before. It's because I grew up playing uh competitive Halo when I was a kid. And just Halo multiplayer. But I was a major sweat on Halo. Like I played tournaments and stuff, so. <laughs> I, uh, I developed the claw grip, and it has carried across to literally every game I've played for the rest of my life. What was that that Ryan said? What did Streamlabs not like? Oh, G. Cole can get the G sp- <laughs> That is crazy. <laughs> All right. Because it was so, um, because Streamlabs abused its power. I will, I will do Ryan the favor of reading this out loud to share it with the class. Um, Ryan said, Cole can get the G-spot and the clit at the same time. Crazy he's single, and I know. It, it would shock you to find out that I'm single, right? It's horrifying. <laughs> Thinks Elden Ring is an FPS. Hey man, all I know is I'm looking and moving at the same time and you're not, all right? I don't want to hear it. Who's the real gamer now? Who's the Elden Ring champion? Look at this. You can't imagine doing this. You could never. Not with your shitty controller grip. Hello, Jacobian. How do you play Tekken? Oh! There's actually, there's a bit of claw gaming going on with Tekken as well, but it's a little different with fighting games. Here, now, now I have to, because this is a good question. For Tekken, what we're doing is actually, like, for fighting games, I'm kind of playing like this, right? Because D-pad's down here with this controller. So I'm kind of doing this most of the time. But Tekken has a lot of inputs that are, like, 1 plus 2, 3 plus 4. Like, you have to hit them on the same frame. Uh, one, two, three, and four being the face buttons. It's fighting game notation for those who don't play them. Uh, it's like one, two, three, four in that order. So if it's like a one plus two, this will actually happen. And I'll press them at the same time doing this. Three plus four, same thing down here. So there is a bit of claw gaming happening on Tekken as well. Oh, that's the wrong scene. 
That's a scene where none of my sources are active either. Just black screen. Where's your rune level one? I've talked about rune level one. If I really wanted to, I could. Fact of the matter is, I just don't think it seems like a fun way to play the Souls games. Although maybe someday, just to shut everyone up about it, I could try. Seems kind of difficult to do. Uh, everything in Tekken is difficult to do. <laughs> Unless you play Victor. Sorry, Victor mains, it had to happen. I, I had to say it. As soon as I said everything is hard, I had to. And level one is silly. Like, genuinely, my favorite part of replaying the Souls games is like making a different build. Like, that, that's what makes me want to replay these games more than anything else, is like doing something uh, that I haven't done before. Uh oh. If I were to do rune level ones, I would probably do the, the whole series. Like one at a time though. I don't think I would do a marathon of that shit. Imagine me being like, all right, demon souls down boys. We did it. We did it. And then I just immediately, I'm like, all right, let's boot up dark souls. <laughs> like, no, I don't think I would want to do that. But maybe someday I'll, uh, I'll do them. Maybe don't take that as a promise. Isn't King the bullshit character? King is a beginner player's nightmare. So when Tekken 8 came out, everyone was bitching about King. Cause Tekken also, as competitive as Tekken is, and as like super technical and deep as it is, Tekken actually has an absolutely massive casual fan base. Like the majority of people who play Tekken just play it casually, right? So when Tekken 8 came out, and sold like 2 million copies in its first few days and all the buzz was around it. A lot of people were bitching about King because the way that throws work in Tekken is when the throw is initiated, once it connects, you have a 14 frame window to break the throw. And depending on which throw it is, because King has like 30 throws, there are actually different buttons that you have to press on the controller to break the throw. So like, if he does, um, I don't remember the names. If he does the one where he runs up and like kicks you in the face, you have to press two to break that within 14 frames of startup. If he does giant swing where he like picks you up and swings you around and tosses you for like a hundred damage, you have to press one to break that one. Like you just have to know the throw and know what button. And I know I'm a nerd sitting here being able to tell you what button for what throw on King, but it's a fun game. I swear, I am i don't have a problem. I don't have a problem. Um, But you get someone who just like plays Tekken for fun. Like, oh, I just want to play Victor and like press buttons and teleport around and shoot gun and all that, right? And those players don't know how to break King's throws. <laughs> Again, shocking your single. I know, I know. Um, those players have no idea. So what King does, because he's a wrestling character and his whole character is throw based, is he runs up, he grabs you. And if you don't know how to break that grab, you're just going to eat the damage. Like you can't do anything about it. So that's why everyone when Tekken 8 came out was bitching about King. And now people aren't really complaining about him as much. But he's going to hit one while messaging her four. <laughs> no, 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 I'm, I'm, come on. I'm a, I'm a Mishima man. I Doria every time. Isn't that full health bar? In Tekken, it's 200 is full health bar. Uh, but giant swing is also telegraphed. It's a single button break, which makes it easier because there's like one plus two breaks where you have to hit both of them at the same time. Um, and in Tekken, when you say at the same time, it does legitimately mean like on the same frame. So within the same one sixtieth of a second, you have to press the buttons together. Um, 
But, sorry, what was I saying? What was the question? Oh yeah, 100 damage. So King, that grab also has a telegraph where he does a crouch dash into it. That's just how he has to input it. So normally, like, if you see King crouch dash and then you get grabbed, you immediately know that it's a giant swing. At least if you know the matchup, right? Um, so you press the buttons and you get out. But if you don't, and because it's such a telegraphed grab, they made it so that, you know, when you're playing high level Tekken, if the other player fails to respond to it and recognize it, they eat hella damage. But at low level tech and play where no one knows what the fuck is going on and they're just pushing buttons, you have a king crouch dash into you, grab you, swing you around and toss you for half your health bar. And you're just like, oh, this character is so broken. Like this is the most busted thing ever. But then you develop a Tekken addiction and you start climbing the ranks. And uh, you learn the counterplay and King is actually a really, King is one of my favorite characters to play against in Tekken 8. He's such a blast to, to fight against. Bitch. Faith Furry. A controller with different in- Ooh! Smithing stone bell bearing- Okay, now the dog is up. She's out. <laughs> is she in frame? Good morning. My door is already open, so that's actually not a problem. I didn't think my door was open. Um... What was I talking? Oh, Tekken, of course. What else would I be talking about? And the dogs are out. I actually have socks on today, which is unusual for me. I I'm normally like actual dogs out. Or like when I'm home, I have my, my bare feet out uh, like all the time. It's why I don't walk away from my desk with, uh, with the camera on. Because every time I do chats like feet, 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 I just, I know better at this point. <laughs> I've learned. Oh, sorry. Offer a bell bearing. Oh, and I have meat peddlers bell bearing. So... <laughs> Thanks. Ring boomerang with Erd tree shield for the win. Is it actually good or is it just like fun? Bell bearing, what yes. Oh, we actually, because of the open lobbies that we do at the end of Tekken streams and the fact that my game broke during the last one, um, someone's gonna have to remind me, maybe, I, I might remember, but Anyone who's there, remind me next Tekken stream that we actually have two sets of Panda that got redeemed like during the open lobby. So I have to play like six matches of Panda at the start of the next Tekken stream. These lore changes are that bad. I haven't heard anything about the Fallout show. All I saw was that one guy on Twitter who uh, took the show's poster and used like an AI art tool to change it so that the woman in the poster was in like a latex skin tight vault suit with her ass just massive, like the fattest ass. And he was like, oh, here we go. I fixed it, you guys, you're welcome. And everyone collectively was like, this, this is a real human being. <laughs> huh? I'm pulling up the fun map once again. Good, not great. It's weird, like it, it kind of just, they dropped it early, which was already like a surprise, right? Um...
there, um... There is a cave. I remember this cave. You know what? We're gonna do it. We're gonna tackle it. We're doing the Academy Cave. It's like somewhere over on this side. I didn't look at the map too closely. Um... Welcome. <sighs> uh, uh. That's hilariously more accurate to the games. And it was a woman who made that vault suit edit. Was it a woman? I don't think it was a woman. I'm very like, I, I looked at their profile for a bit. Because, you know, sometimes I see stuff like that and I have to just see like, is this? trolling or is this legit and it, it they were being totally legit they it was it was something their whole like feed on twitter was stuff like that it, it was wild tapped on an uh, out on elden ring after 70 hours gotta finish it my first elden ring playthrough was so long mine probably came in at like 90, I think it was, roughly speaking. I don't remember exactly. I think it was about 90. Gotta grab all this. My thing with Elden Ring. <laughs> the gamer's TM can't be normal about anything. Wait, 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 is this like a known page? Hold on. This is the first time I've ever seen this individual. Is this like a known, like this person is just something else? Ow. Woo! Leave me alone. I might have to kill it. I'm gonna have to kill it. It started it, okay? I don't wanna hear it. This isn't me. This thing started it. It's still weak to fire, beautiful. We're in the money, boys. And it can't poison me. Although that hurts. Ow. Magic flower? Yeah, never seen one before. beat the moon lady but i stopped there i mean 70 hours to get that far isn't that crazy i mean how many times have i played elden ring and this playthrough i've played this character for 28 hours at this point which was explore it, it, when you're actually exploring the game it, it, it takes a while which is also why my first playthrough was so long i think it was like 90 or more. It, it was long. I don't remember. How many? I, I think it took me like 30 some days. I think it was like 35 roughly of streams. And I don't remember how long I streamed for at that time. Was I doing three or four hour streams at the time? Anyone know at that point? It was a while ago. Self-defense as he pulls out his flamethrower against a fucking plant. That's just Elden Ring. It was self-defense. Renala isn't far in, though. I haven't even done Renala yet. That, that was the point where I was like, I, I've been playing this character for like 28 hours, and I haven't, I haven't even gone to the academy. Oh, my back. That was a nice back crack. Little, good little twist. All right, the cave is somewhere is... Oh wait, did I just see a... Ah! I was about to say, somewhere is around here. How many runes do I have? Oh, that's close. Is there anything I could kill for runes right around here? Bro, right now, the, uh... The Husk Maidens, I think they're called. Um, They have two storm, uh, Stone Sword keys available for 4K each. 
I'm gonna go grab those. Ooh. Oh shit. Squats turn my knees to chalk. Bro, every time that I'm doing squats, the first like three, bro, my hips, the loudest pops for like the first two or three squats every time without fail. I swear my body is aging rapidly. <laughs> getting bad at this point. Didn't catch the t-shirt. Um, it is the Modern Warfare XRK shirt. But I also have a Santa Cruz full zip on because it's cold. And I was out this morning. Speaking of, my voice hurts from uh, screaming in the car very irresponsibly. Like, I know better, but sometimes, you know, like, Slipknot or Arch Enemy comes on and just. Grr. You know? Just gotta. Just gotta let it all out. Again, shocking you're single. Yeah, the XRK uh, t shirt. The, uh, for people who don't know the the newer COD games, they've started just making up their own manufacturers for certain weapons uh, so that they don't have to, like, buy the licenses for actual weapons, right? Like, the copyright rights to use them. Um, so, like, XRK is the fictional um, Glock manufacturer in the new Modern Warfare games. It, it, they're, that's just what they do. They make all the Glocks in the new games. Actually, I got it for um, Christmas, like a couple of years ago. I, I, I didn't buy it, but I was like, you know what? That's kind of cool. I, I'm, I'm for it. The 2000s Halo 3 Game Fuel Mountain Dew has aged like a fine wine, or would it kill a man if they drank it? I would think it would kill a man. I, I've seen stuff like that where people will randomly be like, oh, I have this like special, you know, bottle of soda from like almost 20 years ago. And it's just like, um, maybe don't drink that. <laughs> uh, I, I wouldn't if I were you. pointed out that I had it on the wrong way around. You had it on backwards? <laughs> I've not played Blasphemous. I've heard of it, but I can't think of what it is off the top of my head either. I know that I've heard of it. There's a chance it's on my Steam wish list. Maybe, I don't know. Because I know the name, which tells me that it might be on my like 400 game wish list of Someday this might be on sale and it it steam will notify me when it's on sale and maybe I'll pull the trigger and There's it's legitimately I have 400 games on my steam wish list. I'm not joking Any game that I'm even like the tiniest bit interested in I'm just like wish list wish list wish list Souls like that plays like a Castlevania. Yeah, that's probably on my wish list. Hold on We go store Wish list Blasphemous. Oh. Really? I do know the name. There's two of them. I've... I've definitely looked at it before because I've seen this. I've seen this artwork before. Okay, put both of them on there. Hold on. Rated M for mature. There. Um, okay. I just kind of opened this out of habit because I'm at the grace. Was I leveling? What was I leveling? 
I've got some random numbers. Both of these. Like, I know why these are 12. I know why these are 24. 21 and 13 are kind of random. I don't know which I was leveling between health or endurance. Because I know that I needed um, more equip load. You bitch. Sulk Song is on my wish list. Sulk Song is a great nickname for it, even though I know it's a typo because, you know, the I and the U are right there. But sulking is all the Hollow Knight fans have been doing, waiting for a new announcement. <laughs> the announcement that's never coming, by the way. I'm sorry. It's just at this point, you know, I, I've, I've given up, chat. I've moved on. Someday it's gonna it's gonna be like a unicorn that suddenly appears, you know. But I'm not holding my breath for it. Ah, how fuck? Why am I here? You know what? Just for you. No, Silk Song, we've started to get some leaks, uh, like good leaks, by the way, about, um, what's it? Games that are going to be at Xbox's big showcase coming up in June. Silk Song has not been included on those yet. There is hope in the community that it'll, it will release. It could be there because I heard about the Xbox store page going up like what, a month or two ago? Like a little bit ago, the Xbox store page went up. Um, and there's not much on the store page. Like it was still just, you know, release date to be announced and everything. But there was a store page that went up. It could be at that showcase. Um, all I'm saying is that we've started to like get leaks about what will be there. Like we know that Gears of War 6 is going to get announced in June. We just we know that from sources that don't talk out of their ass, like sources that always have actual good uh, info. Like Gears of War 6 is getting announced in June at the showcase. We just, we know these things. Ow, fuck me. <laughs> Leave me alone, dude. All right, I, I think Magic Sword is gonna have to be the approach here, right? I hate this place. Ah Check this shit. Ah, ah, ow, ow, ow. Okay, new plan. Huh! Ow, fuck. That helps. And you just broke that story for me, so thank you. I mean, allegedly, of course, we we have no way of knowing. Of uh, You didn't hear it from me. But you're welcome. I'd be scared to release a follow-up to Hollow Knight. It is one of those things, you know, it's... it's like, it could be... What is like one of the best gaming sequels ever? Like like second in a series sort of best sequel. I'm trying to think. It could be like a mm, There's got to be a better one. What's like Oh, it could be a Mass Effect 2. You know, just like peak of the genre for years to come like 20 years later, it's still like the peak of the genre. Or it could be like a Dark Souls 2. Like first game, you know, took the world by storm. Second game is like, oh, what happened? And we just don't know until it's here. Do we riot if they fuck it up? 
Skyrim? Skyrim was like the fifth. Uh, you know, I was looking for like a second one. Oh, Terminator 2. Yeah, yeah movie-wise, Terminator 2 is a good one. <laughs> Where despite like seven attempts to follow it up, they just can't do it. <laughs> they just can't do it. Seven is exaggerating, but you get the point. Like they keep trying to make a successor to Terminator 2. And I mean that literally. They keep making entire new timelines. <laughs> Legitimately. Every fucking Terminator sequel since T2 has been in its own unique timeline from the rest. Because they keep trying to be like, okay, no, 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 that one, that wasn't our real follow-up. This one is. And just every single time it happens again. Because they're never good. Terminator 2, still the best. Still drop a new banger OST. I feel like that is a thing. Most bad games don't also have bad music. Right? Just me. Like most games that are notoriously bad, they tend to have solid music. Bro, I have the most aggressive hiccups. They are absolutely fucking my shit up. Trying to think of like a, a notoriously shit game that also just like the soundtrack is a crime to humanity and I can't come up with one. Can I T-pose through objects? No, worth a shot. Like BO4? BO4 is a good game. Oh, Mickle! Mikkel, I, I didn't want to ping you on Discord about this, but let me do you a favor, my friend. What I want you to do, Mikkel, is go to Spotify. Go to Kevin Sherwood's Spotify page and look at, like, the recent albums, his most recent releases on the album side of things. And thank me later. This is a recent discovery of me of mine. Oh, what will come first, Silk Song or Switch 2? Switch 2. It's coming out early next year. Currently. Their current timeline has it coming out early 2025. Was gonna be holidays of this year, but it got delayed apparently. Um, and the delay does not have anything to do with the hardware, before anyone gets their hopes up on that. The delay came because the I've talked about the Switch 2 delay before. It came because of the software team needing more time, which if you don't know, let me let me take the, uh, the marketing and PR speak out of that. What they're saying is one of our launch titles for the Switch 2 has been delayed and we don't want to launch the system without it. So the delay has nothing to do with the hardware. It's like, Whatever launch title, like maybe it's a new 3D Mario, maybe it's Metroid Prime 4, whatever it is, one of them got delayed. Whatever they're launching with the new Switch, one of them got delayed and they're waiting for that to be ready. How do I get to where that guy is? Is already starting with a year of lag? I mean, Nintendo, right? You're not wrong. Oh, you saw already? Yeah, when did that happen, Mickle? Because, like, just a bit ago, we were talking about, uh... How, like, none of the BO3 and BO4 music was on Spotify. And how much of a crime it is. But now it is. It better be Prime 4. Could you imagine how crazy it would be if one of the launch titles for the new Switch was Prime 4. I would think that would be like an insanely big play for the Switch 2's launch. Like release a game that people have been waiting almost 20 years for as a launch title. Dude, that would work wonders for that console's release.
Ow. I'm just, I'm trying to go straight for that. Yeah, this. That guard break. Software team, probably. Bro, did you see, like, if it is Prime 4, theoretically, which of course, we don't actually have any good knowledge that it could be or would be or anything. Um, but say that it is, right? In theory, one of them, because obviously they're going to have more than one game to launch the system with. No shit. You're welcome for my hard-hitting journalism on that one. But, say that it is Prime 4. Did you see Metroid Prime Remastered just like visually? That is by far, no competition, the best looking game on the Switch. Like, not even, not even close. Metroid Prime Remastered is just visually the best looking thing on the Nintendo Switch. Hands down. Would have had such an insane development cycle. Well, it's been canceled and greenlit like three different times. That much we do know. Is it's one of those games that like they keep trying to make it, but it gets to a point where they, they scrap whatever they have and they cancel that project and they try to like start it from pre-production again. Waiting for Hades 2. I forgot that you played Hades. Hades is good, man. Hades 2 is gonna slap. I'm glad that I got into roguelikes, like, uh, a couple years ago, because I love that shit. I love a good roguelike, personally. You know what I'm really glad that I got into last year, and now, like, rolling into this year, is fighting games. I, I am so hooked on fighting games. Okay, just very careful. There we go. <laughs> it's a sorcery. Fuck me. I was like, this is going to be the biggest item ever. It kind of, you know, of course, it's at the top of the academy, but god damn it. That game looks insane. Bro, Metroid Prime Remastered. I'm actually shocked that that shit runs at 60 FPS locked like no drops on the Switch. It's crazy to me. Nothing on the Switch, like fidelity wise looks that good. Art style wise, there, there's going to be a lot, like some people would say like Breath of the Wild is still one of the best looking games just because they like the art style so much, but like fidelity wise, I meant. It's just primary master is actually wild. If Hades 2 gets delayed, the indie game community will collapse in trauma. Well, I mean, indie game delays are just like, these last few years have been wild in terms of just indies, like constantly delaying stuff. Cause I mean, you know, you just, you need time. All right. Um, if you know what that is, we're doing it live. Sepper played on cheat mode? Wait, 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 Sepper did what? What do you mean Sepper played on cheat mode? Explain to me what you mean by that. GTA 6. My uh, my dad, like, last week asked me if he should be buying stocks in Take 2 because of GTA 6. And I was like, 
Are you looking for a long-term hold or are you just looking to like buy it, hold it for a little bit, sell it once it goes up? And he was like, buy it and sell it like soon after. And I was just like, a dad. <laughs> GTA 6 is, uh, it's not close. <laughs> I was like, if you buy it now, it's going to be a long-term hold. Take Two has nothing outside of GTA currently. And that's a ways away. On God mode? What is God mode? It's not God mode in the way that I generally understand it, is it? Holiday 2025? Currently, yes. <laughs> Which also then there's the whole thing of like that is the initial release date and look if, if the 2020s have taught me anything in terms of the games industry It's that most big releases in the space get delayed at least once like past when they publicly reveal the date There's at least one delay almost every time Um, What was I about to Google? I was about to pull something up. Oh Hades God mode God mode grants 20% damage resist, increasing by 2% each time a run ends in death. The damage resistance caps at 80%? Per 80? Eighty percent. Let's just rephrase it slightly, right? Eighty percent damage resist means you only take a fifth of the damage. <laughs> Let's phrase it that way. And Sepper is the guy who was constantly on my shit to go back and finish Hades. <laughs> and he played it on the fucking baby mode. Oh my god. And it's, it's not like, oh, I don't want to finish it because I didn't enjoy it. I played a lot of Hades before I dropped it. But it's just like, at that point, I had really experimented with like all the build craft and stuff. I had a lot of the persistent upgrades already. And all I would be doing would be like increasing my heat runs to just get more story out of it. And the story is good in Hades, but it's not amazing for me. I, like it didn't grasp me to the point where I needed to keep playing more and more just for the story. Like once I had done all the roguelike stuff I wanted to do, I was good. Like once I had gotten my fill, I was out. Oh fuck. Camera, please work with me. Camera, please. <laughs> Bitch. Oh my God. Oh, I never used my physic. Oh, of course. There goes my bubble. Ah. Oh. Lock off. You don't want to see me without the lock on. Put the release date as when it's ready. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. I do remember that. Oh, I can just look for, yeah, my rune pile. I don't have to keep, like, marking the spot to know where to go. Thank God. I hate the death birds so much. Hey, I'm here to kill this bird and get whatever he's going to give me. Like, I'm just, this time around, I'm going region by region. I'm looking at the map, and I'm like, do I want to do this? And the bosses are almost always a yes in terms of, do I want to do this? Oh, I forgot the, uh...
So basically, Stepper didn't play the game. Stepper played the, the story, but like gameplay wise, he had it on the mode where like, you really can't, you have a flask upgrade? How do you know this? What flask upgrade do I have? Okay, I only had one. How did you know that I had one? How did you know? Come on, big bird. That'll do it. Check this shit. Eat this casual. Oh, it actually hurts you a good bit. Hold this shit. Oh. Don't peck me. What is that? Ah, fucking hell. I'm almost dead. Whoa, this looks fucking sweet. The art style came through for a second. Just had to pop in and remind us. Oh, God. Do you... It, like, am I just not going to be able to stagger you? Is that what's happening here? You just... You got too much resistance going? Too much poise, whatever. Not resistance. That's not the word I was looking for. I mean, in a way. I guess poise is just resistance to stagger, right? Ow. Fuck. Eat this T-pose. <laughs> Shit. That looks bad. Oh, we're still going? Are these gonna blow up or some shit? Uh-oh. Oh, who's redeeming shit? Oh, thank God. Tool wig is better. Is better equipped for this battle. I forgot he was gonna say it. Thank you, Ryan. Uh, that's... That's a sorcery, right? Well, Chol got it done. One ninety one is not a good bit when he takes one forty percent against Holy. Um, I think it's great. I think my health was fine there. I might want to go for just the equip load right now because I was working on getting that up. Stamina is nice with the shield, too, but it's mostly equip load that I need right now. Some of the saddest shit is watching Asmund play this game. Uh, just jump slashing with two halberds for 80% of the game. Bro, and Asmund Gold fucking loves this game too. He thinks this is like the greatest game ever. <laughs> Aside from World of Warcraft, of course, nothing could be better. <sighs> yeah, I think equip load. Um... Do not watch Mr. Drag. No, no, no. This this is optimizing because we're going to be doing a Mikkel. We're using barricade shield. We the stamina and the equip load is going to be huge. The equip load is that I can wear. Um, what's it? Higher poise armor. 
Look, 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 look. Just because Mikkel doesn't understand the build here does not mean that it's poorly optimized, okay? Sorry, I'm looking at the map. There's another one? There's another death bird. I was like, what is this field boss? It's another fucking death bird. <laughs> well, I've already slain the death. I, I slayed the big one. I could go and do that now. That that's gonna be easy. I'm all warmed up. Let's let's get the, the other one. The weaker one. The vision is poorly thought out. No, it's not. <sighs> Most of the roleplay guilds. Oh yeah, yeah. The basic guide to Asmin. Uh Wow, best game ever. Uh, Diablo 4, worst game ever. That's just the baseline if you're ever going to watch Asmongold. Those are the two things you need to know. I was about to say, where's my death bird? Oh, this one will be easier. What? Ah, fuck! Don't kill me, oh my god. <sighs> I didn't know about that attack. That, uh... I can't be blamed for that. You can't put that on me. Don't forget that Asmund rides Actman, or Meat rides Actman. Also don't remember that the only reason he started meat riding Actman to begin with was because Actman made a video talking about how much he hated Diablo 4. Like it feeds directly into the joke that I just made that Mikkel even brought that up. That was the beginning of Asmin even doing that. Got ultra killed. Am I a Greek hero by chance? Maybe? What do you mean? Why do you ask? When he has roaches crawling on him live on stream, bro, that clip is insane. I've seen the roach clip. For anyone who hasn't, it's literally a clip where if you've ever seen his bedroom, you can maybe imagine how this would happen. He's just sitting there streaming and a fucking cockroach just starts like crawling up his shirt. It's just like <laughs> Which also if you know anything about roaches He has su oh my god, I got grabbed again He has such a bad roach problem in his place Roach oh, it was huge. It was a big one uh, Like not to just gloss over that either Um he has such a bad roach problem in his place that in the middle of the day, because roaches don't typically go out in the light. They prefer to stay in like dark places. They don't like the light. Um, In the middle of the fucking day, like broad daylight with a ring light shining on him, he had a roach crawl up his torso. Like that's how bad his roach problem is. That's not normal. That if you have roaches, they just kind of like come out and like crawl into the light. That They don't do that. They're known for like, you know, if you have a really bad roach problem, what happens is like you walk into the room, turn on a light, they scurry away. He said he keeps his lights off all the time. He has a professional lighting setup. Like you can just see it in his camera. He has a full studio lighting setup. So even if the lights in the room are off, You know, the snacks come walking to him. Yeah, it, <laughs> if you've seen his room, I mean, yeah. If you haven't, just Google Asmongold room. That's all you need. I'm sure it'll come up. He's known for it, for the record. He has a reputation for his room among the streaming space. Like he's just, he's known for this. 
His room is gross. His house is, it's not even just his room. Thank you, Ryan, for bringing this up. Cause in his video of like doing the, um, the video where he makes his infamous $2 steak, right? Um, he pulls out like this, this, uh, cooker from like his garage. And it's like covered in like spider webs and stuff. And he's just like, oh yeah, this, this, this is normal. We, we can use this, whatever. And he doesn't like get rid of the webs. He just plops it down on the counter and starts cooking his steak. Oh no, was that the pizza? Sorry, it's the pizza, not the steak. The pizza video. It was like a little, it, it was like a portable oven. Sorry, it's the pizza video, not the steak video. And I'm just like, you keep the oven you use in your garage? And you just, you just use it with the, the webs and everything? <laughs> it had to have been a bit, surely, bro, I don't know. And that guy has millions of dollars. I mean, that's kind of like the f the funny thing. That is like the one of the, the handful of things about Asmongold that to me is actually like Giga Chad. Is that he is one of the wealthiest creators in the space. And yet, like, <laughs> if you've seen his house, like he, he just kind of sits on his money. He doesn't like spend it. Like he inherited the house from his parents. He could go and live in this large, luxurious house if he wanted to. But he doesn't. Like, he has a free place that he just, you know, he chills. He doesn't have, like, a fancy car or anything. He Like, he doesn't even, uh, like, you know, have a proper oven. He has, like, a little portable oven that he keeps in his garage that he uses instead. To keep it clean. No, 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 it should be clean. I'm not saying that it's Giga Chad that his house is filthy. But like, it's Giga Chad that he lives below his means and that he just kind of like saves the money. I don't know what he's saving it for, but he's a saver. I'm a saver, I don't spend money. So to me, I'm like, yep, I love him for it. He drinks some more soda in a month than I have in three years. I've seen a clip of him um, drinking water and like being repulsed by it. And that clip is something because I doesn't he like only drink soda? I've seen the clip of him drinking water on stream and being like, oh, oh, it's so gross. I was going to say, and then there, he did a video where he did like a fruit tier list with some other streamers that are in Austin, Austin, Texas, where they are. And um, like almost every single fruit he eats and he's just like, oh, that's disgusting. No, because he like only he's known to also just only eat like fast food, frozen pizza, two dollar steak. So he eats like fruit, like he eats like strawberries and he's like, oh, no, that's. It's horrific. No, I can't eat that. He puts it in F tier. He is just like the most... Like, Mickle said it. He's just like the most... Um, accurate depiction of like, D-gen, like, goblin gamer. In a way that's endearing, for sure. I won't act like it's not. <laughs> but at the same time, it's just shocking. Like, half the shit that you see from him is just like, what? Like, his diet is genuinely at the point where he just can't eat fruit. Like, his body is just like, no, I don't want this. Fuck off! Why are you here? Oh my god! Oh no.
What in the tentacle hentai is this? Why did this guy just pull up on us mid-fight? What's wrong with you? Talisman is a good reward. What is it? What does this one do? Raises attack power when HP is low. No. A strawberry could be amazing or it could be awful. That's true. That's true. Strawberries are not a consistent fruit. I'll give him that much. Sometimes I do eat strawberries that I'm... Well, I'm also just not huge on strawberries, personally. Like, I think they're fine. But, uh... Like, sometimes I'll eat one and just be like, No, I don't want any more of those. It's just... It's not a good strawberry. Sorry, I saw the Erd tree icons and then I remembered I was going to do that, but I remembered that I've I've done those. So. Um. Mm -mm -mm. There's a cave down there. Or sorry, a catacomb, not a cave. I Bro, the amount of times that I, like, say the wrong thing between, like, cave, catacomb, and tunnel. I'm actually, like, at the closest grace as well. It's a nice coincidence. It's a must for rune level one. Wouldn't you want the one? Isn't there another one that raises your attack when you're at max HP? Wouldn't you want that instead? Not the low HP one? Oh wait, does it work off of a percentage or a, a raw number of health? It's percentage, right? For low HP? Because if not, then it's even worse than I would think it is. If it just uses like a straight number where it's like, oh, if you have less than... How much health do I have? If you have less than like 200. Oh, it's a percent. Then why would you want it on rune level one? when everything's going to one-shot you past, like, the first three areas. Wouldn't you want the max HP one instead? Because you're always one-shot anyway, so it's just perma attack buff. kind of forgot that I even had that going for the I, I did see the Dark Souls 4 what was it called Some, it, it's like Demon Souls 2 for me I saw it and I, as much as it's Dark Souls 4 I was like bro this is there's so much Demon Souls going on here this is like Demon Souls 2 there you are oh you pair it with Seppuku I see. Arch souls. It was something arch. Speaking of demon souls, I fixed my RPCS3. I think I mentioned this somewhat recently. Um, the reason I'm not back on demon souls, it, even after having fixed it, because if you don't know, like mid demon souls playthrough, we were having a good time with it. But then uh, RPCS3 just randomly broke and I legit couldn't even start it up. Um, it doesn't look like there's anything there. 20% buff when below 20% HP. Oh, 20% is pretty good. That's better than most talismans in this game. That's the one thing with Elden Ring, is I feel like a lot of the talisman buffs and stuff um, are kind of weak. It's part of the reason I really like the Convergence mod, because stuff in late game actually like scales up more and more. And so by the time that you get further into a Convergence run, it feels like all the items you've gathered are actually really worthwhile and valuable. Compared to like Elden Ring talismans will be like, oh yeah, this is like an 8% buff. 
And it's like, okay, 8%, like, I'll take it. It's better than not having it, obviously, but like... 8%? What's the difference between Dark and Demon Souls? There's different games. Uh, Demon Souls was the first Souls game. Dark Souls was the second one. Uh, but it's because Sony um, owned the Demon Souls IP and Demon Souls didn't sell well when it came out. So Sony didn't green light a sequel and FromSoft said, all right, we'll just make our own then. But they couldn't use the IP, so they just they made Dark Souls instead. Gameplay wise and stuff, like if you play Demon Souls and then go straight into Dark Souls One, it's like yeah, Dark Souls One is Demon Souls Two. It's just like it's set in a different like world and everything because of the copyright stuff. But. Like, all of the design principles and stuff from Demon Souls are in Dark Souls. Just expanded or built upon or cut, you know, whatever. Some of them got cut, but, like, it's so clear if you play them back to back that Dark Souls 1 is just Demon Souls 2. Ow, fuck me. I got stuck on the pillar. <laughs> okay. Maybe Kingsfield? No. Kingsfield was... A lot of Kingsfield ended up in Demon Souls. It's true. I'm not saying it's not, but like... They're also so different. It feels like Kings Kingsfield 1 through 4 are like the foundational ideas of everything that the Souls games ended up being. But then Demon Souls is so far evolved from Kingsfield 4. That it's like that that's where things really started. It's like a spiritual successor maybe to Kingsfield. You know, like King but I wouldn't say that Kingsfield was the OG Souls game. You can say it and you're technically right. Like you're not necessarily wrong sort of thing, right? But like they're just so far apart that it feels weird to say it. The Arch Thrones, that was it. I knew it was Arch something, Arch Thrones. Cause when I first saw it, I, I was looking at it on stream cause someone in chat was showing it to me. When I first saw it, I straight up thought it said Archstones because Demon Souls. Is the remake good? The remake is basically one to one. It's a good remake. More of a remaster than a remake. There are like a few new weapons and a few, um, what's it called? All right, sorry, a few new weapons and like one new set of armor and a couple quality of life changes. Other than that, it's basically a one-to-one -one remaster, aside from some art style stuff that got changed for some reason, but like it's so few and far between that that even is there. You'll get a virtually identical experience playing either version. Like aside from visuals and just presentation and stuff, uh, like the gameplay and the, the story and Etc. Etc. Like it's it's the same experience. Oh, there's two of you. Ah! Bubble, please. Thank you. I was like, please tell me the the big hit is the first one. Thank God that was a one hit toss. I'm so. Ooh. Ow! Fuck! Hello, Korn. You could say it's the original Souls-like. That, that, that's probably closer. Like, Souls game feels extreme. But you could absolutely say that it's like the foundation of the Souls-like genre. That feels much more fair. 
Okay. Man, my voice hurts. I know better. That shit is healed, but not... Not enough for, uh... 30 minute scream sessions in the car. Using none of the code from the original? Well, that's just like I, the way that I look at it is, it's just kind of the way, like remaster, remake it, the process of how it came together is not what defines it. It's the end product. It just doesn't make sense. Like it's, it's not a verb. It's a descri- it's a noun. Like, if you're looking at it as a verb, like, a as the process, then the way that you look at it makes sense, but it's... That's not what it is. It's talking about what the game as a final product is, not how the game was created. It's just not how, like, genres... Or, I guess, genre is a weird thing to say there, isn't it? How it came together is exactly no. That's it, that's where the disconnect is here. It's because that's not what the terms are. Wow. They're marketing terms. What is this? Behold piercing, but ah, beating to a pulp. He's just going into the wall. I was considering an upvote at first. I was like, behold piercing is kind of good. I don't get the beating to a pulp and him phasing through the wall. <laughs> he lost me. Oh, fuck. Please stop using remake and remaster interchangeably. It is super annoying. Because that's the the big problem with it that I've talked about that has led to the confusion between the two terms is that because they're marketing terms, the industry has just started to label a lot of remasters as remakes because it sounds a lot better when you're trying to convince someone to buy the product, right? So a lot of them have just started saying like, oh yeah, Demon Souls, this is a remake. We remade the game, which like the statement we remade the game is accurate. The statement this is a remake though, they're two different things. The verb and the noun, the action and the product are two different things. You wouldn't call a remake of a movie a remaster because it's nearly shot for shot? Yeah, but that's an entirely different form of media. Like, uh, then... Like, I don't compare, like, extreme example, right? But, like, I don't compare painting techniques to game dev techniques, because we're talking about two completely different art forms. So where the terms come from? It's not. It's just... Like, they have the term remake in the film industry, but we don't use them the same way. And even, like, if it did come from that... I mean... Uh... It's just, we use them differently. Or music. Music uses remaster for when you just take the, the song and like you use the source files from back in the day to recompile a version that has more like dynamic range and stuff like that. To make, just make it sound clear, like export it at a higher audio bit rate and everything. It's a remaster. You get the same thing, but it sounds better. 
that's actually much more comparable to what we use in gaming. Again, completely different art form, but like that's pretty much the same as how it's at least supposed to be used in gaming, where it's like you get the same product, but it just sounds better, looks better in, in terms of games, but you get what I mean. Like same thing, same experience, better. Almost the exact same game with some new voice acting and extra lines drove me insane. Yeah, it's and it's like, you know, you just kind of go with it because people have labeled it a certain way. Right? Like, yeah, I'll still call the Demon Souls remake Demon Souls remake because that's just what everyone knows it as because that's what the marketing was. And so that's just what everyone calls it. Oh fuck, I'm dead. We've witnessed a miracle. God is real. What you call art is not a real art form, Mickle. I will ban you. I know that's bait. <laughs> I know he's baiting me. Ow, fuck. I can time him out if you want. Is Mickle not uh, managing? Same songs, but up the quality. I don't know. I feel like they would have for Linkin Park if they had the files. Although they might do it at some point now. You wouldn't call Black Mesa a Half-Life remaster? I wouldn't. Lego. Do you know what Black Mesa does? It changes the level design. It rebalances the game. It adds set pieces, it cuts set pieces, it adds areas, it cuts areas. It's a remake. It changes the gameplay experience. Black Mesa, I wouldn't call it a Half-Life remaster. I never have, because it's a remake. Oh, he is managing. The kid who does a really good Chester voice? No. Chop. Boosh, 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 boosh. Oh, I already picked that up. We're good. Whoa! I'm fucked. Oh my god, I thought I was gonna get stun locked into the second hit. See, now why do you guys wake up when I go down there? I think that that's cruel. I don't know why you do that. By playing the Game Boy D-Make of Elden Ring? There's a Game Boy D-Make of Elden Ring? I didn't know about this. I obviously know about stuff like Bloodborne Cart. I actually am so pissed that Bloodborne Cart got um, cease and desisted. Like, Sony, you guys aren't using the IP. What the f- Like, what are you doing? Why are you cease and desisting fan projects when you aren't even using the goddamn IP? What is- ugh. It's just Sony things. Actually, that's like Nintendo things, but it, it's just Sony doing it this time. Time for pickle? Okay. See, that one's better. Would I like to have upgrades for planes like in seven or no upgrades? I would like to have the upgrades. I, I think plane parts are good. Oh wait, no, I came this way. Hold on. 
Does it want me to... How do I get there? <laughs> like, I, I can see the end goal. Uh oh. It's within reach. Is there a... I thought those were notes for a sec. Are those notes? No. Are they? No. I think that's just a lighting bug. But... Oh no, those are arrows. Okay, 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 okay. The portable part system or the seven part system? I think the aircraft tree is... I think it's a better play overall than the portable system. I think like it's one of those things where the portable system for like long time fans where you have to like complete certain challenges or whatever to unlock them is better for people who are going to replay the game over and over and over again. But looking at like trying to expand the the appeal and the marketability of Ace Combat, which is something that definitely needs to be a focus uh, with Ace Combat going forward is like, how do we maintain like what has made these games good, but also open it up to more people? Um, I just lost my, oh yeah, yeah. Uh, the aircraft tree is a lot better, if you ask me. Just simple, like you get points. Do you want to buy planes? Do you want to buy parts? Oh, we go down here, okay. Um, 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 fucking shit. No, don't do that. I'm stuck, I'm stuck, I'm stuck, I'm stuck. Oh my God. Why are you so fast? You're not supposed to be fast. Look at you. Fuck off. Oh God. We're scrambling. Hold on. I got this. This is easy, clearly. Fuck! <laughs> um, you know what? That's not what I wanted. That was a misinput, by the way. I fat fingered R1. I did not mean to actually push it. My God, what is this onslaught? You are supposed to be the big, fat, slow enemy. What is happening? Thank God for that kick attack. Again, not what I had in mind. Bro, I'm dead. <gasps> We're alive. Patience is key. Patience is key. You ever hear them say patience is a virtue? This is why. Um, why is that one stuck? Fucking hell, that's death. God damn it.
Aircraft are grown on trees. They always have been. What do you mean now? Oh, one part per category versus a bunch of parts. Um, I kind of like the bunch of parts. I, I mean, I like both in different ways. I think the bunch of parts um, it leads to a little more freedom, a little more creativity in a good way. Sounds so submissive and breedable. Breedable problem. Hold on. Now I have to hear it. What did that sound like? The noise, I was like, okay, whatever. But the, I'm stuck, I'm stuck, I'm stuck. Help me step chat, okay. I would have to assume breedable. With, with my high testosterone. New text alert noise. I'm stuck. I'm stuck. I'm st that could be a whole ringtone. That could be for a call. Oh my god. By the way, just random thought. Because my brain went, um, false can never see this clip. To just explain why we're going here. But, um, last night. I, I made an unintended appearance on False's stream. It was her community night last night. So it was the, the day out of the month where she like just plays games with chat, like random games. Um, and they had an open slot. And even though I had planned to be working, she was like, anyone trying to join anyone? So I joined in to fill the slot, the helpful, helpful boy that I am. Um, but, <laughs> bro, it was this game where, like, I'm trying to figure out how to describe it. It was called Oh Deer, deer as in the animal. And one player is the hunter who's out with a bow and arrow hunting deer. And then there's four players who play as deer. And the whole point is that when you're playing as the deer, there's a shit ton of like actual NPC deer running around the forest. And uh, you have to like blend in with them for long enough for like the hunter's sanity to run out. And when the hunter's sanity runs empty, all of the player controlled deer turn into Wendigos and hunt the hunter down to win. The hunter wins if he kills all the deer, and the, hunt, the player deer. Because if you shoot an actual NPC deer, it will take a chunk out of your sanity. You have to find the actual players, not just shoot every deer in the forest. Um. And, dude, I was just in maximum shitpost mode playing that game last night. I was doing the dumbest shit that whole stream. And it was hilarious. That was like, I left that lobby thinking to myself, why am I not that funny on the Halo streams? Because God fuck, like I was just doing the, I, I was farming all the Keck W's last night, Twitch chat. I, I was farming so many Keck W's on that stream. Some of it I was like just, doing maximum trolling. Some of it was just funny deer stuff. Where the Wendigo having deer horns thing came from, because it's not a native thing. It depends on what tribe you're looking at in terms of like the original legend, because they all kind of looked different. 
the the deer horn thing has kind of just now come from like the the general depiction of it like as it's been adopted from like native myth oh shit but if you go back and actually look at like the ancient feels like the wrong word i feel like when we say ancient we're, we're talking like bc but you go back and you look at like the depictions from hundreds of years ago and it it's all over the place like it just depending on region and tribe and like they all like they had a similar that's kind of the freaky thing about the wendigo too is that like across all these different regions and tribes and everything they all had this kind of figure and the myth behind it was so similar like it's so similar across like all of america across all these different tribes that assumedly as far as we know at least nowadays didn't have contact with one another and skinwalker are the same thing they're not the same thing they are very similar they're not the same thing literally but they're really close i fucking love the wendigos are cool man that's one of my favorite um oh i meant to do this uh creatures in mythology And I'm a big mythology nerd. <laughs> People who know the Chol lore know that I took um, mythology studies, mythological studies in um, college to like fill out my electives and stuff, my elective credits that I needed. Uh, I took mythological studies in college. And even before that, in, in high school, to fill out my electives, I took, like, worldview and religious studies. I love that shit. I love that shit. Woohoo. version from the witcher though oh yeah i've only played the first witcher still someday someday i'll get through the, the whole trilogy of that and the whole time i'm gonna have people like you need to read the books and i'm gonna be like nope not doing it you can't you can't make me Ooh, I'm, oh i i somehow ducked it it's evasive enough Hey, man, if it works, it works. I don't complain. I do not complain. Come here. Oh, not like that. A oh, fuck. Every time. How divisive The Last Jedi is. Oh, I've talked a lot about The Last Jedi. Star Wars fans don't like when I talk about The Last Jedi. I don't think it's that bad. I mean, I, I don't love it. I... I... I've seen it three times over the years. I've seen the original trilogy countless, like I honestly don't know how many times. I've seen the prequel trilogy the whole way through maybe like six or seven times, I would have to say. Last Jedi I've seen like three times. So I definitely don't like it as much as, uh, as the majority of Star Wars stuff, but I really don't hate that movie the way a lot of people do. And I could go into my whole ramble about how Luke Skywalker's character didn't actually get assassinated in that movie. And that they just took like an actual nuanced approach to the character and dug into a deeper motivation than just being the good guy and Star Wars fans massively blew it out of proportion, but I, I'm not in the mood to do the whole spiel right now, to be honest. It takes a lot of energy to go through all that. The Witcher really isn't that good. Ooh. It is a hot take. Although nowadays in the gaming space, it's not that hot. A lot of people like looking back on The Witcher 3, 
uh, at this point. The Witcher 3 is going to be, give it another like six years and people are going to look at The Witcher 3 the way that we look at Skyrim right now. We're like, there's going to be a really solid group of people who's like, oh, absolute masterpiece. Like, I still love this game and play it to this day. But we're starting to see, like, the, the Skyrim effect kind of kick in with The Witcher 3. Where um, a lot of people are like, you know, when this game came out, it was awesome. Like, for the time, this was amazing. But you play it now, and it's just... It's not the same nowadays. Like, it, it doesn't really have that effect anymore. Like, there's certainly a growing opinion of, like... It was amazing when it came out. Like, it's not that that wasn't the case. But you play it nowadays, and it's like, yeah, this is good. It's just, a lot of people now are like, maybe it wasn't as much of a masterpiece as we thought. I still highly rate it. See, like, there will be people. I'm telling you, give it another, like, seven years. There was nothing like it at that point in that. Yeah, exactly. Like, at the time, it was, like, a big step forward. Like, it was genuinely, like, this is uh, incredible. But you play it now in an industry where we have a lot of games like it that have, like, imitated it over the years and kind of built on that formula and made it better. That now you look back and it's like, well. It, it, you don't appreciate it the same way anymore, you know? It's like Skyrim. Skyrim came out and it was like, oh my god, this is the greatest thing ever. I play Skyrim nowadays as someone who thought it was mind blowing in 2011, and I'm like, yeah, this is fun for like a few hours. But like, I could just go play another open world RPG and probably have a better time. And I'm right, I absolutely could. Wah! After the first like third of the game is over. How long is it? Cause I feel like I've heard varying things. I'm, it's probably one of those games that like, depending on how much you do, it, just like the amount of time. I know that the first Witcher is like that. The first Witcher you could probably play through in like seven or eight hours. I played the first one for like 20 plus though when I played it because I was doing like all the extra stuff. Probably like 40. Jesus. Hello, Gray. Welcome back. Hello? Boosh. Still want a Leshen tattoo, though? really want a tattoo of anything right now like i always have the thought of like oh that would be a sweet tattoo but then i'm like do i really want to get that tattoo though and i'm always like mm, no not really Ooh. if that game is not called tekken bro Hold on. Tekken 8. Enough said. Hold on. Oh, he's not. I was like, is Owen currently playing Tekken 8? <laughs> I was like, hold on. What What is he playing right now? Because I saw him in game. I want a tattoo. I just never have the money. Yeah, it's like the money. Just the actually like, you know, taking the time to go and do it, the, the healing process. Like, do I really want to do all that? And then it's like the, the always having it. I'm like, I think this is really cool right now. Would I still want it in like a year? The answer is always probably not. I am the luckiest motherfucker.
Just get the tattoo on a t-shirt. Yeah, see, I, I could just get a shirt. Absolutely. Oh, speaking of shirt, if anyone happens to have that, that gray Tekken shirt, like the Tekken 1 shirt from Uniqlo in a, in a men's large, if you would please um, send that to me. I, I genuinely, like two days ago, went to buy it and the shirts are actually on sale for like 10 bucks. And I was like, oh dude, I lucked out. But they're out of like all sizes aside from medium. And unless I'm super lucky, the medium is gonna be too small for me. So if anyone happens to have that gray Uniqlo t-shirt in a men's large, uh, do your boy a favor, please. What's my PC specs? Uh, CPU, uh, i9-13900K. <sighs> GPU, uh, RTX 4080. I got 32 gigs of RAM. What else is important? That's, that's the stuff that's important for gaming. SSDs, of course. We live in a modern age. Speaking of bro, Owen still has a has a hard drive. <laughs> and all the time he's like, bro, it's just uh, like <laughs> resolution. I run 1440. I don't have a 4K monitor. It goes up to 1440. Um, but Owen always like whenever he's installing a game, he's like, do you think I should put this on my SSD or my hard drive? Cause he does have one SSD in his system, but it's not very big. So he can't fit like a ton of games on it at once. And I'm just like, dude, you really, well, Owen also, Owen just needs a whole new PC. His, his CPU is old. His GPU is old. His drives are old. Like he's on a hard drive. Owen just like, I, someone needs to hook the guy up with like $3,000 and just juice him out because Jesus. 4080 at 1440 is a lot of frames. It definitely is a lot. Uh, but yeah, last year I was still rocking my PC from like 2018, which was a juicer in 2018. So it was holding up. Of course, not an Elden Ring. Hey, someone had to say it. Uh, it was still holding up, but uh, it was starting to like chug along a little bit in certain games, especially when like streaming and stuff with new releases. So I was like, you know what? I spend like 40 hours a week editing. I stream games every day. Like I just, I need a new work PC. So I juiced that. I actually, I just filed my taxes last night. Uh, depreciating deductible on the entire thing. Wonderful didn't save me from needing to pay this year by any means, but we take what we can get. In five years, I'll have gotten the money back from the PC on my deductibles. Smiley face. Is there a reason you aren't using a lamp? It's not dark down here. It's well lit work PC, right? It is a work PC. I probably wouldn't have upgraded yet if it weren't for streaming because the I had a 1080 Ti in the uh, in the last build and it's it, like that's still a card that is holding up just fine. Uh oh. Like, if you're still on a 1080 Ti, like, it, it's surprising how well that thing is still... It's, it's starting to get a little rough, but, like, as of last year, it was... If you're just gaming and you're not doing, like, streaming and video editing and all that alongside it... Um... The 1080 Ti is still great. But when I was, like, you know, streaming Baldur's Gate 3... 
it was starting to get a little rough. You know, I could use the upgrade. What I'm really looking forward to is when I eventually, one of these days, this is not a, a an if question, it's a when question. Oh my God. Um, Decide that we're gonna play RDR 2 again, Red Dead Redemption 2 again on stream. And seeing how the new PC can get that looking. Still competes with budget to mid-range cards today. It's incredible, because it genuinely does. Like False in her current PC has a 3060, because she built it like a couple years ago. And she got a budget card for the time, right? Like current budget card. So she has a 3060 and my build from like three years prior got like four FPS less than her on whatever game we were playing with like all the same settings and stuff. Cause it was genuinely like equal to, I think the 3060 TI, or sorry, not TI. The 3060 is like 2% faster than the uh, the 1080 80 Ti is. Something like that, like it's about the same. So like two whole series later, like they still had a card, or sorry, two whole series earlier, that thing still was competing with like current cards at the time. 1080 Ti, like that was one of the, it's just kind of lucky that I built my PC at that point. Like just when I did it. Um because it really it held up for so long. And I couldn't have known that it was gonna hold up for that long. But I was just kind of hopeful, right? That like, you know, this thing will last a while. That's why I got the juicer card at the time. It's the same reason I have a 4080 now. Um same reason. Don't optimize the games for the GTX cards. Hey, 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 they just don't optimize the games for anything nowadays. It's fine. Uh, I didn't go for the 4090 because it was like 300 bucks extra for like a 10% boost in performance. So it was like spending 25% more for like 10% more performance. I just, I didn't feel the need. I didn't feel like it was worth it. But the intent here was just like, juice it out right now. This bitch will last like four years, right? We just, we rock with it. So far, so good. Is an overkill for 1440? Yeah, but I like to future proof so that I don't need an upgrade for years. Like that's kind of just the whole point. It's not about what I'm doing right now. It's about what I'm doing right now. But also what am I gonna be doing in five years? <laughs> It's a long-term plan, right? Come on. I was like, I got a Discord ping. What is it? And it's Owen, who I was just talking about, sending me a Dragon Ball shit post. I'm stuck, I'm stuck, I'm stuck. I'm still playing WoW on a PC from like 2016. Well, WoW, I mean, WoW does get updates and overhauls and stuff, but WoW, you know, it's been around. Hold on, I gotta grab the grace that's somewhere around here. There it is. For your buck option, yeah. But yeah, like if you're not playing the new stuff that just, you know, aside from like fidelity and rendering and all that, um, uh, what's it called? My brain. Oh yeah, isn't optimized. Like the old cards right now aren't doing too bad. Bitch. You are definitely not gonna be weak to holy. 
Or fire, I would have to assume. Or definitely not sorcery. Like if I use the, the beam attack, I think we just gotta do this the old fashioned way. I don't know if there's any exploitable weakness for me to use here. Oh, fuck. Ow. off that was so sick like I jumped the tail for a second and then I got clipped uh oh uh oh uh oh oh we're fine oh, hello how's the weather up there Oh my god! Bullshit hard mode mod? I haven't heard of this. Sets all stats to level one, nerfs all status effects and stuff like that. No. No, I have not considered that. That doesn't sound very enjoyable. I, I'm already the guy who's like, yeah, I don't want to do a rune level one run because it sounds lame. Like, with enough... Have you guys seen how fucking stubborn I am when confronted by a challenge in a game? It's not a matter of can I do it. It's a matter of how long will I take to do it. Uh-oh. Torrent, I'm sorry. Oh, fuck off. That one shot's me too. We were so close. It's not lame, bro. No, for me, I want to do the build thing. And I want my play style to be different every time. It's so like rune level one just doesn't sound like I would enjoy it. Maybe I need a little more help. Maybe we're at that point again where like 21 vigor just isn't going to cut it. Because that was a straight one shot. Why is it that every time I replay Elden Ring, we do this? Where I'm like, yep, absolute bare minimum health scaling. Don't need it. And then I just get one shot and all of a sudden it's like, okay, maybe I need it. Why, why does this cycle repeat? And I say this, but it's never gonna stop. Uh oh, thank you, Bubble, for saving me. The health argument always happens, it does. And chat's like, you need more health. You're in Liurnia, why do you have 20 vigor? And I'm like, no, I'm fine. Don't worry about it. Happens, this is just, it's a pattern. Happens every time. Ooh, the fire damage is good. Hold on. Bonk him in the feet. Oh, 
Oh my god. I'm alive. Oh, the timing. You should be fine with 22, though. I would imagine 22 is probably enough. You haven't taken the Far Cry 3 definition of insanity speech to heart. Fire damage seems good. You know, horse is the safe option. Whenever I'm ready to cash in on damage, pop off Torrent real quick and hit him with a couple of uh, fire swings. Get like a thousand damage off of those. The horse is the option for the patient warrior. And I am one very patient warrior. Now would be a good time to do this. Yeah. Fuck off. <laughs> so. It would seem that the magic missile is also a one shot. Yep. There we go. Would suck in the DLC as much as it did in the main game. I don't know. I'm just going to hope that it doesn't. I'm placing a bet, like I'm, it's a it's a solid bet that maybe to like throw everyone off, they're gonna make a bunch of the stuff, like a bunch of the content in the DLC weak to holy damage. To make up for the fact that in the base game, holy damage by the end of the game is just awful, like just doesn't work. Um, oh, I think that was a stagger, wasn't it? Oh, no. Nope. I guess not. What the fuck? Really? <laughs> I hope Holy is even worse. Yeah, it's kind of a, you know, it's a Miyazaki directed game. So it really is a 50 50 coin toss on will magic be, or sorry, ma not magic. Will, uh, will Holy damage be just as awful, if not worse? Or will it be. words are hard. I'm broke. Will it be better to make up for it and like throw people for a loop? Because everyone's making like their DLC builds right now, right? Like everyone's working on a, a quick playthrough to prepare. How many people are making a holy damage build? It's not many. It's a rhetorical question. It's not a lot. It's really just us psychopaths that are doing it right now. And me personally, long term, like once we get all the items from Lane Dell and stuff, <laughs> I'm going for like pure holy damage. Dex and Arcane, oh. A rivers of blood enjoyer, a man of culture. I see, I see. This is a safe space. Rivers of blood is like my favorite. I like how Holy is weak against like 90% of the main bosses and insanely OP against like three optional bosses. Yeah, the death birds just eat holy damage. Everything else in the game? It's, uh, it's not the move. You guys think we're having a rough time now getting one shot by the dragon? Just wait until late game with a pure holy build. 
It only gets worse from here, boys. This is my rune level one. This is as close as we're gonna get. Enjoy it while it's here. Oh, fuck. That is not the fire attack I thought it was gonna be. There it is. Hello. Oh, fuck build. Yep. Oh, I never used my physic. Probably should have gotten on torrent. Yeah, there it is. Oh my god, that shit one-shots me. That was terrifying. I'm alive. Oh, sweet Jesus. Can you cut his tail? We're not playing Dark Souls. This is Elden Ring. Which, if you ask me, it, it's pretty much Dark Souls 4, but uh, some of the rules don't apply. I wish the tail cutting thing was still in Elden Ring. It's so fun. Ooh, ow. Oh, fuck off. Same shit. I went the wrong direction to get away from the fire and insta died for it. The frustration is building. If you think we're going to leave. Absolutely not. Bonk dragon with magic weapon, magic resistant. The magic dragon will definitely take a lot of damage from the magic weapon. Trust me. That's how these things always work. Okay, that did not work how I thought it would. It was worth a shot. It was a good attempt. Also worth a shot. Oh my god, I'm fucked! I just grab the key and go stab the dog? No, no, no. We do it the right way. We kill this thing. Unga Bunga is the way. If we just swatted at the legs, we would probably get through it faster. I would think. Just because it's the safe option. Like, fire is big damage for one swing, which is great. But maybe I just need the safe option. Okay, it didn't work again. Uh-oh. Oh, we're dead. <laughs> I... I did the wrong thing. How many caps was that? Is this Streamlabs going mad with power? It might, it might still need to be a little looser. Never apologize to Streamlabs. 
Streamlabs just rules with an iron fist, all right? Not everyone can handle it. Bonk, bonk, bonk. Bonk, bonk, bonk. I did it, finally. I did it the right way. Wrong way. Fuck. Hey, Torrent's alive. Oh, okay. Just me whiffing into the air repeatedly. Somehow, we have recovered that. This is fine. Bud. I thought this was America. This is still... I feel like that is a South Park bit that got better with age for me. Like, as I, as I grew old and wise... The, uh, the bit about Randy, like, getting into brawls at the Little League games just got funnier to me throughout the years. And then every time the cops were taking him to jail after he beat the shit out of some other dad at the game, just like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I thought this was America. Every time. I should go and look. I'm just, I'm curious, that's all. I'm going to. This is not the Dragon Cathedral. <laughs> Hold on. This is. Because Americans became exactly that. That's also true. Everyone just does like the dumbest shit imaginable. Like the most obvious, like, yeah, you're going to get in trouble if you do this. And then when they get in trouble, they're like, oh, I'm sorry. I thought I had freedoms. I thought I had rights. Whoa. Why am I being arrested? You can't arrest me. It's true. Does something illegal, gets arrested. I thought this was a free country. I'm so what Whatever happened to our nation? This is... This is what's wrong with America. Are there are other fun bosses here. Mm. Have I done that? That could be really fun. I have not. Excuse you, officer. It was not hate speech. It was free speech. Yes, exactly. Uh, that is the elevator. You start blabbing about freedom and the stream goes down. They took our jobs is also... <laughs> I 
I have to hold my breath to do that. <laughs> I can't breathe to do that voice. That, that's just, I feel like it, it's funny because it's like clever and actually like a thing. Like it's based in actual reality for America. And also it's funny because it's South Park and they just progressively lean more and more into like the stupid part of it where the uh, the Southern accent just progressively gets more exaggerated every time to the point where at the end of the episode, they're just going, duk -a -duk -a -duk -a -duk. So I, I love South Park for that shit. <laughs> like they'll have actual like clever humor and thoughtful commentary and then they'll just be like, duk -a -duk. The greatest Elden Ring area, Raging Lucario. Uh huh, uh huh. There's the there's the bit where they hire Chewbacca's lawyer for like the court case, and he goes up and he's like, "This is Chewbacca. Do you know anything about Chewbacca? Do you know what Chewbacca is?" The judge is like, "He's a Wookiee." He's like, exactly. <laughs> the Chewbacca defense is just classic, like, what is happening? Runs them so far, it becomes a whole new bit. They do. And it's awesome. That's like one of the best parts of that show's humor. Is they, it, like, it starts out relatively normal and like, oh, that's, yeah, that's funny. And then by the end of the episode, it's just absolute batshit. Like, what is even happening? And that doesn't make sense. Exactly. They're like, oh my god. It doesn't make sense. They drop the case. They drop all the charges. <laughs> so stupid. I love it. Speaking of OJ... I saw that OJ died a couple days ago. I feel like, am I just like, so not active on social media and so not watching the news anymore that it seemed like no one was talking about it or was it just like something that no one really talked about? Grace. Thank you. OJ Simpson? Yeah. Wife demands me playing at co-op with her. Yeah, I'll be doing it solo. That's the good part about being single. I don't have to co-op the El Elden Ring DLC on the first run. I was talking about... I was talking a few days ago. I feel like it's something that you don't get unless you've been there. But you guys, I'm gonna ruin the magic a little bit here, okay? I know that every gamer is like, I want to be in a relationship. The ladder is right there. I can't. <laughs> every gamer is like, I wanna be in a relationship with another gamer, right? And yeah, it's nice. I've been there twice. Out of my three like serious relationships, been there two out of three times, right? It's nice, has its perks. Also, it has its negatives. One of them could uh, theoretically be if, so if I had like a girlfriend or a wife who was like, when the Elden Ring DLC comes out, you need to wait and we need to play it together. And I would just be like, huh? My my innate response would be like, yeah, you can kiss my ass, but that, that wouldn't go well. I can't say that in this context, right? I can't. Shit gets serious when you try to hold back from calling. 
Um, the big down, the one that I was talking about the other day was I was, I was explaining why I have like this running bit where when people ask like, what's the biggest red flag you can think of? I always say League of Legends, right? Like it's, I've done it for a long time now where if, if anyone ever asks about red flags without a thought, I will answer League of Legends. And at first it's just like, oh, haha, ha, funny, but I'm not joking. <laughs> I mean, I'm joking a little bit. It's not the biggest red flag, but it's a big one. You know why? Because I dated a league player, a retired league player, but one who relapsed once in a while. And you know what happened when I dated this league player? She wanted me to play league with her because, you know, we're both gamers. I'm supposed to game. We're supposed to game together. And I'm, I'm a single player guy, mostly, right? So when we're going to game together, she plays multiplayer games like League and Valorant. Valorant, I didn't like Valorant either, but you know what? I had to play it with her. That's why, chat. That's why League of Legends is such a red flag. If they play League and you start dating, then you have to play League. And I know that no one here wants to play League, right? Just to confirm. At first I thought False was your girlfriend. I, I would act surprised, but at this point, I'm not. You are not the first, and you will not be the last person to think that. <laughs> Trust me. <laughs> Has good net code. The controls are good. No. No League of Legends sympathizers in this chat. What is happening? <sighs> Beautiful execution. Flawless, even. For a smithing stone five. Awesome. Is that safe? Oh no, this. Okay. I was like, that doesn't seem safe. There we go. My wife asked me to play League, I'd ask for a divorce. Yeah, League, Valorant is a runner up for me. And I was talking about it a couple days ago. Um when I when I was talking this whole general thing. Overwatch is becoming a red flag for me because I also just don't want to get pulled back into needing to play Overwatch 2. I just don't. And someone was like, what about COD? And I was like, you know, I could handle COD. Like, if, if if I'm dating someone who, like, one of the, the conditions is just every once in a while we have to play Call of Duty, you know what is at least good about Call of Duty? I don't have to pay attention. I don't have to actually take the game seriously. I can just chill out. Like, I, I can just not really be, like, invested in it. I can just be hanging out, talking, doing whatever. I can deal with COD. COD is fine. I don't even understand what's happening in Valorant. It's just Counter-Strike, but the abilities just... The abilities make it kind of stupid. Okay, we live. I was like, am I dead? Uh, it was a genuine... Oh, fuck. It was a genuine question. I had no idea. PSO2? PSO2. PSO2. Xbox act this says I put 1200 hours in I have a couple hundred hours on overwatch like overwatch one and I played overwatch two for like the first season and then they started making like all the big changes oh fantasy star I don't even know what it is really I know of fantasy star online I don't really understand what it really is
I don't get the abilities that make... Yeah, the abilities kind of just make it... Like, some of the abilities are really basic, where they've just made, like, the, the utilities into character abilities. Like, you know, characters have smoke grenades, and characters have uh, molotovs, just, like, as abilities... Um, but what, what's it? it? It's the stuff like, um, like their ultimates and stuff that get so like out there that I'm like, see, you've taken Counter-Strike, which is a game that in my mind, you know, I, I liked Counter-Strike for, I have a few hundred hours in Counter-Strike. I used to play it a good bit. In my mind, Counter-Strike is still great because it's got like the simplicity that just has a ton of depth to it, you know? Like you've got a few simple things on, on the surface that when you really dig deep and start to get good at the game, are, they, there's a ton going on on like a deeper level, right? You take that and you start just making it straight up, comp like you take the simplicity out of it and it's like, well, now you've just made a shitty Counter-Strike clone. <laughs> Like, yeah, we made Counter-Strike. But, like, kind of the core thing that makes Counter-Strike so... Um... What's the word I'm looking for? Uh, the thing that makes... I don't... I'm looking for the word for, like... It retains its popularity over time. It doesn't... It doesn't fall off. I'm, I'm looking for a word like that but I can't think of one. Duo QE daters, yes. There is like this whole thing where Valorant like notoriously on casual matches has kind of just become a dating game. Like it's literally just a dating website at this point for like e-boys and e-girls. Enduring, enduring, timeless. These are good words. These are words that do mean what I was thinking of. Oh, fuck. Don't kill me before I grab. Thank you. You can kill me again. That won't hurt me as much as losing like 12k when a level up is like 14k. I really was like, oh my god, I'm going to lose a whole level right here. That scared the shit out of me. And I need the health. I'm learning. Especially for Big Tunnel right now. I could use it. Come here. I just remembered that I have a shield. And I should probably be using it. Counter-Strike for weebs. Yeah, it's... <sighs> Valorant is a red flag for me. Oh. Somber 4? And I have like 15k runes? You guys... I get more health and more damage right here. And I'm absolutely just going to go cash that in before I keep going, because this tunnel is going to be a bitch. I came here for like a challenge, but since I'm so early on, let's do this before I get too deep. Let's just make things easier. Well, I took you for no to lay out your arms. Oh, I've got enough to upgrade the shield again, too. I could probably upgrade this just for the time. Like, I'm not going to be using basic smithing stones. The coated blade is also... Um... Sombers. Words. So, like, if I've got the smithing stones for my temporary seal... Oh, wait. Fuck. Um... Golden Order Seal for when I grab that, because obviously, holy damage. No shit. Um, is that Sombers or Basic Smithing Stones? Oh my god, I lost my health level. I'm so stupid. I spent too much upgrading the, the seal. Animal Crossing is also a red flag. Those chicks are maniacs. My, my previous ex who played League and Valorant and Overwatch 
also played Animal Crossing a lot on her Switch, but she was pretty chill about Animal Like, Animal Crossing wasn't like one of her favorite games. She just, she played Animal Crossing. Not as like a main game. It's different. Because I know the kind of people that you're talking about. It's different. She, she was a casual Animal Crossing enjoyer. She had her moments. I still cannot believe that um, I was able to keep my previous relationships so private. Mikkel was around at the time. Because I'm just like, I prefer to have it that way. She agreed that she would just rather not like be on stream or anything. Because I was on Twitch at this point, right? Not YouTube. She was like, yeah, it's fine. I don't, I don't really want it. My roommate? Yeah, 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 yeah. Not just the fact that we dated for like a year before chat ever even got me to admit that we were dating, like at that point. But then also, we lived together. And I still like, we managed to never have any sort of slip up where she never, where she like didn't know I was streaming and like walked into my room or anything. Cause it's really easy for that to happen. So the fact that we lived together, I am shocked by how private I was able to keep that relationship. Literally, I've never seen a guy that was like, yeah, I love Animal Crossing. Bro, like two of my close friends from high school actually do fucking love Animal Crossing. Like, on March 20th, 2020, I was grinding out all of Doom Eternal's campaign in one day. They were on the Animal Crossing grind the whole day. There, there were two types of gamers on March 20th, 2020. Which, if you don't know, if, if you don't just... Because <laughs> if you're not a big fan of Doom or Animal Crossing, you don't... You won't know what I'm saying. Um... On March 20th, 2020, both Doom Eternal and the new Animal Crossing came out on the same day. And it was like a big meme at the time. Did they turn out to be trans? No. One of them's gay. But no. That tracks? Yeah, that's my gay best friend. They are actually both gay. The other one is very not, trust me. <laughs> the Animal Crossing and Doom Eternal collab was legendary. It was, it was hilarious that like, the two communities, like the Doom and the Animal Crossing community were like totally in on the bit together where we were like all in celebration. And there was like fan art of like the Doom Slayer and like Isabel from Animal Crossing being like best friends and stuff. Like it was hilarious. The meme was awesome. There was like fan art of Isabel from Animal Crossing as the Doom Slayer. And then the Doom Slayer, like, you know, managing his island and paying off his debt to Tom Nook. I did play both. I played Animal Crossing. I think it was called New Horizons, the Switch one. It's the only one I've ever played. I, I was just like, yeah, there's a lot of hype around this. I'll try it. I thought it was fine. I liked it. I, I didn't like grind it. But it was a solid, like, sort of... At, at that point, my Switch, I, like, never played it docked, and I played it in bed to, like, go to sleep. I would, it would chill my brain out to just play, like, a little Switch game. And Animal Crossing. I used Animal Crossing to put myself to sleep for probably, like, a solid month. You cannot be a straight dude and play Animal Crossing. It's the rules. It's fine. It's all right. Uh, my buddies who are really into it, though, they loved it because, like, they had it on, like, GameCube growing up, right? Like, they, they grew up playing Animal Crossing as a kid. So for both of them, it was, like, a nostalgia thing. That's probably the main reason. Because definitely not many adult guys are just randomly like, oh, yeah, I, I want to get into Animal Crossing. It happens, but it's not a very common phenomena. 
It was, it was literally Barbenheimer. It was the same shit, but it was Animal Crossing and fucking Doom. It is actually the same shit. Like even just like dark, uh, I, I, dark is really the only shared descriptor. It, totally, it's similar as well. It's like all all the the dudes, like all the macho dudes, had something, and all the all the girly girls had something, you know, on the same day, and we were all happy together. Definitely an Animal Crossing lover. Well, Mikkel, I'm sure you experienced some Animal Crossing then, and I bet you enjoyed it, right? I could see Mikkel being like, yeah, I kind of fuck with Animal Crossing. Like, I'm, I'm not huge on it, but like, yeah, I'm, I could play it. Solid. Pikmin 4 came out the same day as Barbenheimer, did it? I don't remember, uh, it's probably because Barbenheimer was just the, the running thing that I don't remember that also being the same day. Also, because no one talked about Pikmin 4 outside of like critics. Oh, I escaped. It was miserable. <laughs> ah, you see that? That there is the Altus Plateau. How do you cope with the fact that there are no Mass Effect news? The shit's killing me inside. I mean, it's one of those sequels where like, you know, I've waited 12 years. So at this point, I'm kind of just like, it, you know, until it gets really close, I'm not gonna really feel the hype all that much until it's right about to come out. Whenever stuff is absent for so long, I always get like this, where it's like announcement comes out and I'm like, oh, sweet. And then I forget about it until it's like a month away. And then that last month is painful, but announcement to like that final month, I'm always just like, oh yeah, that's eventually gonna be a thing whenever that happens. Ah! Oh, Mikkel, I haven't even asked. Wait, Mikkel, just to confirm, you're still on PS4, right? You still, you're still on your like, I don't need the PS5 grind set. I don't know how I've never thought to ask Mikkel about this. Although Mikkel might just be out of the loop on leaks and stuff. I don't know. But a similar question to the Mass Effect one I just got asked. How do you deal with the fact that the sequel to Cold War Zombies is coming out this year. How, how does that sit with you? Oh, that's where he is. I'm like, I hear this fucking guy. Do not. Sequel of a mode? Yeah, 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 yeah. I bought a PS5 for Ratchet and Clank and they ported it to PC. Hey, it's like Phil Spencer said, you know, the the end the end game for the gaming industry right now is PC. Phil Spencer himself, everyone, CEO of Xbox did an interview like two weeks ago where he's like, yeah, the console market doesn't have much of a future anymore. Everything's moving towards PC slowly. Just get a piece. No, Mikkel's just on PS4. It's not like Mikkel went to PC because he was like, oh yeah, PlayStation 5, who needs it? No, Mikkel is just on his PS4. <laughs> and I mean, at this point, like you can't really convince people to buy the PS5 either. You know? Cause like, 
It only has probably three years left in it. So why would you buy it now if you haven't bought it yet? Like Sony has, has just come out and been like, yeah, PS5, we're in like the later half. So at absolute best from Sony's statement, right? Um, it's got another four years. I would assume it's three. Just going off of the last couple PlayStation lifespans, they've both been seven years apiece. The PS3 and the PS4 were seven year life cycles. So most realistically, it's got three years in it. Three years left and no games. Surprise Gran Turismo 7 isn't on PC. Well, Sony's still working on just getting everything ported over, like one thing at a time. Uh, the next, or no, sorry. I was going to say the next couple are Forbidden West and Ghost of Tsushima. But Forbidden West, I think, already came out on PC, didn't it? Just no one talked about it because, to be honest, no one really cares. Um, sorry, Horizon fans. But it, it was like, it came out on PC, the announcement, everyone was like, oh, Horizon. And then the release date just like came and went and it was like, okay, I, uh, I guess it's out. I missed the fact that it was already out, but I guess it's out. Um, What's it called? It was a Firefox thing. Opera. The one thing I really like about Opera GX is it, it's probably the most well optimized game or sorry game. Wow. Um, web browser Ghost of Tsushima is like next month isn't it same week Elden Ring was released that certainly didn't help the PS5 release of it like at all Wah. And I'm dead. Apparently sold well, even though literally no one talks about it. Well, from what I've heard, it ended up just kind of being like a super generic open world game, like narrative game. Because the original Horizon was like that, where it was like, okay, yeah, this is like a Ubisoft game just made by a Sony studio. And it sounds like the sequel was just kind of that again. So it ends up being like, yeah, this is a Ubisoft game, but the story doesn't suck. Is kind of like the, the Horizon thing. And I haven't played either of them yet, personally, because it's like, yeah, I don't really... Like, I'm... Story is cool. Story is a great bonus, but I'm not, like, buying games for the story most of the time, unless it's, like, the best story ever. Um, and yeah, I'm just like the Ubisoft thing. I haven't bought any recent Ubisoft games because I'm not thrilled on the, uh, the formula anymore. Like I didn't play the Avatar game. I didn't play the new Assassin's Creed. I skipped Far Cry 6, uh, Ghost Recon Breakpoint, Rainbow Six Extraction. Took me a second on that one. Like, I've just, I've been skipping all the Ubisoft stuff, because at this point, I'm like... Mm. I wish they didn't kill Little Big Planet. It's so weird to me that they did. But I guess, like... Little Big Planet, in a way, was kind of like a right place, right time sort of thing. 
where I, I do kind of wonder when I really think about it, like would little big planet be like a big financial hit nowadays, do you think? Because it would absolutely get a lot of like nostalgia purchases. But do you think there's like a lot of growth potential in the little big planet franchise today? Because honestly, there might not be. Like, sure, there's always, like, a younger generation of gamers, but now, like, Fortnite creative mode is a thing. Like, a game like Little Big Planet isn't quite the novelty it used to be. I'm convinced that the Splinter Cell remake doesn't exist. I can confirm to you that it does, or at least it did exist at one point. You want to hear some troll lore? Um, I actually, I got a job offer um, to be a systems designer on the Splinter Cell remake back in 22. Um, I got a job offer for that title, but I would have had to move to Canada. And also it was in early 2022 and I was still finishing up my degree and they wanted me to move out like immediately and start working on site. So I would have had to drop my degree to go work on it. So it was just like, there were a few factors that was like, cool to get an offer for that project, but no. That was probably unprofessional for me to slip. Oh well. Those prices and taxes are crazy. Yeah, a couple of my buddies live in Canada right now. And yeah, definitely, it's the the economy in Canada. Like, as bad as we have it with the economy in the U.S. right now, Canada has it worse by, like, a good margin. Like, even just, you know, aside from, like, living costs and all that, like, Canada's having a lot of the same problems we are, but their inflation is outpacing ours. Like, they're... Their uh, dollar is losing value faster than the American dollar is. Like all the same problems, genuinely. Just their value is dropping even faster than ours. And that's saying like our, our value is dropping rapidly. Our inflation is really fucked right now. Hello, ghost. Happy birthday. If I had to pick five most important video games, what would I pick? Tetris, Doom, Pac-Man. Um, five most important. Tetris, Doom, Pac-Man. Chess video games. Uh. The original Legends of Zel uh, Legend of Zelda. Fighter? It's kind of hard with a lot of stuff that like you you definitely could like Street Fighter for fighting games. Yes. Like Street Fighter put fighting games on the map. Fighting games as we have them today wouldn't be a thing without Street Fighter, but like are fighting games that important to like the larger industry, you know? 
why, like, as much as I want to be the fanboy and say Resident Evil, it's like, no. I can't. In top five most important? No. What would be my fifth one? I'm not going to say Pong, by the way. Someone is going to say Pong. I'm leaving Pong out, like, just, it's such a default pick, I'm not going to say it. If you wanted the actual legitimate number five, sure. But it is such a brain dead default choice that I'm not gonna say Pong. Oh, Super Mario Bros. Uh, bros. Super Mario Bros. Original again. Quake for sure. Quake for 3D graphics, but... Oh, that's, 3D graphics are big, too. I'm going with it. What did I say? I said... Legend of Zelda. Um, Mario Bros. I don't know how I didn't say Mario Bros. sooner. Super Mario Bros. actively ended the collapse of the entire gaming industry. I don't know how I didn't say that shit sooner. I don't know how it took me so long to come up with Mario Bros. Um, Like, that single game saved the entire industry from a painful death. And that's not exaggerating. Like, the original Super Mario Bros. Uh, there was a huge collapse of the industry in the early 80s. Like, no one was interested in video games anymore. It was over. Game companies were hemorrhaging money. They were just bleeding money. They couldn't make a profit. And then Super Mario Bros. came around, and everyone fucking loved games again because Mario was so damn good. Everyone was addicted to Mario. Got everyone to buy an NES. Gaming revived. Oh, I said Doom. No shit. Obviously, like, I, even just going into, like, uh, the FPS genre is the top earning genre in gaming history. Like, just has generated the most profits. Um, Chess-based, like, rock, paper, scissor-based uh, design in a real-time game was a really big deal. There was barely any of that before. It's not that Doom was the first. It wasn't the first to do, like, chess-based, like, rock, paper, scissors type design in a real-time game. Oh, Tetris and Pac-Man. Yeah, yeah. Also, just some of those games in the 80s, but for different platforms. Like, Tetris was... Actually, Tetris and Mario are kind of together on that. Pac-Man for the arcades, because even the arcades were dying, but then Pac-Man was huge. RPGs are a massive part. Yeah, I, it's why I went with Legend of Zelda as, like, RPG plus open world. Legend of Zelda is, like, the the core basis of modern open world design. At least uh, not, like, literally one-to-one. -one. If you want literal one-to-one, -one, it's, like, Assassin's Creed. But... Uh, the Like, the foundations that Assassin's Creed was built on were from the foundations of GTA 3, and the foundations of GTA 3 came, like, it's a whole domino effect that goes back to Legend of Zelda. Time Crisis? <laughs> Time cri- Sure. Fuck it. Time Crisis. Why not? Sure. <laughs> we all know you guys. Light gun shooters? Biggest in the industry. My teeth, sensitive. Ow. Water isn't normally the worst, especially. Oh, oh. Why do I have this nice cup that keeps the water cold for hours when my teeth hurt when I drink cold water? Bad idea. Uh, anyway. What was I about to say? 
Oh, I also, Zelda for uh, real time, like making it more action, which is the, the direction that the general RPG formula went long term. Minecraft? Minecraft? Like, it, I feel like... I feel like Minecraft is like a top 10. It's up there. Definitely. It's gotta be like a top 10. It can't be top of Roblox. Someone ban the zoomer. was also really important though. Super Metroid is kind of a weird one. Cause Super Metroid was a big deal cause it was so good. And cause it was like the, the perfect culmination of the Metroidvania formula. But also like Super Metroid didn't go on to have like an industry like ripple effect the way that like, I'm kind of looking at, like, how did it affect things, like, long-term, mostly? Which is why, like, Pac-Man, Tetris, Mario... It's like, modern games don't exist without those games. So, it's just like, they... They're on there... Again, like, if you... If you were doing an actual straight objective list, like, yes, Pong would be on there. Space War would be on there. No one knows what the fuck Space War is, but it... it you know how everyone thinks that Pong was like the first video game? Space War is like the actual first video game. It wasn't Pong. There, there were games before Pong. Pong was the first like home console video game, which is why everyone thinks that it's just like the first game. Everyone know what Space War is? No, you gotta be nerd. You gotta be nerd. Unless I'm getting the name wrong in some brain rot fueled delusion. Oh. Progression's a good argument. I watched Irate Gamer when I was 11. I never watched Irate Gamer, but I'm aware of him uh, talking about it. Yeah, here, hold on. You guys wanna see it? This was the original video game, um, but it was a computer game, which is why like Pong was the first console game. So in terms of how we think of games now, most people think Pong, when you, if you ask someone like, what was the first video game? Everyone's gonna blurt out, like even I'm going to think Pong and then my brain is going to kick in and I'm going to say Space War. And I might even blurt out Pong. Like, I, it might take a long enough time that I have to correct myself after saying Pong. You want to see Space War chat? This was Space War. Boom. That is a real picture of, a, of the OG gaming PC running Space War. Isn't it beautiful? I, I take it all in. I know it's a lot. It's a lot to to really digest. There it is. Space War. Gorgeous. Uh but yeah, if you were doing like an objective list, like objective top five, it would be um Is that Valve test game? Do you know why? It's named after that space war. I'm actually, I, I always forget about that. So I'm actually glad that you said that. That makes it even better. Objective top five for most important games, in my opinion, would be Space War, Pong, Super Mario Bros. What were the other ones? Oh, Tetris and Pac-Man. Like those would be the five actual most important games. But... I have a bit of a modern skew, so I threw out things like Doom and Zelda, because, like, the snowball effect from those...
uh, nowadays is so important. But like, you know, was that AI? It was not AI. I think Space War ran purely off of patterns. If I'm not mistaken, I don't think it had any sort of like AI or anything going on. A lot of early, early games didn't, right? Objective top five lists in my... Well, it's because, like, even everyone says objective, and then there's going to be variance because of, like, your bias and the way that you look at it. When I say it, I'm like, okay, these five games are the five games that gaming would not be a thing without. So I'm just, like, those, they're all kind of a default pick, right? Could we get Tekken Cross Armored Core? No. Anyway, it is about that time where I have to go eat dinner and get back to video stuff. So I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did enjoy and you haven't done so already, feel free to go ahead and leave a sub, come back another time. Uh, we're doing this. We're doing uh, Armored Core Ultra Kill. Ultra Kill has been really, really fun and we're getting close to the end of it. And then I'm just going to mess around in like the horde mode and stuff. And then we'll, uh, on the last Ultra Kill stream, the next one will be the last one for the record. Uh, we'll figure out uh, people really like the idea of doing more boomer shooters, like indie and actual old boomer shooters. Because, you know, we're a bunch of boomers around here. Um, so we can figure out what we're going to do after that on the next Ultra Kill stream as well. Um, we're doing a lot of stuff. Come back for any of it. <laughs> Also, if you enjoyed, leave a like on stream, algorithm stuff, blah, blah, blah. Um, if you're interested in stuff outside of YouTube to engage with the community, Twitter, Discord server, whatever, those are in the description. Um, what series? Oh, the Metal Gear reviews are what I have pinned today. If you haven't seen the Metal Gear reviews yet, we're 10 games in out of, it will be 18 in total by the time I'm done. So... If you want to get caught up on that, that's a good few hours of video content pinned right at the top of chat if you're interested. Other than that, though, once again, I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you obviously back here. All of you guys back here next time. Jesus. Um, I hope you all have a rest of your day. Thank you for coming to the stream and goodbye.